Okay, now that I know the, uh, the text I want to use, right there, I need to decide how it's going to be placed around my spot illustration on my poster. Is it going to be above and below? Is it going to be off to one side? Is it going to be uh, in odd format or is it going to be straightforward? A good example of this is tattoo design. Tattoo design often has to take kind of spot illustrations, these free floating images, and then if a client wants text to, to go with it, they have to kind of integrate that and they'll often use banners. So that's also an option. You can actually wrap your illustration with text, put it over the top. And a lot of the beauty of kind of vintage tattoo design is in the text blocking, how they integrate type with image. So there's tons and tons of approaches to it. You know, I love that, that type design that goes with the spot illustration. But it, you have to pay attention to the, the kind of personality you want yours to have. Now, I want mine to have more of an animation feel. So I might get inspired by title cards, sometimes called title flags. So if I look at the images, like G.I. Joe, that's a title flag. It's more of a technical term, so let's just look at the titles. Superman, the animated series, you know, the shape of that. Batman, the animated series. Sabrina, Spider-Man again. Comics will have these title flags that go on every issue of their comic, right? For decades. So you can be inspired by the shapes of some of these things, the styles. I guess mine is more inspired by things like anime. Like you have Naruto, it's got its type design, One Piece. Netflix has its title design, you know, just the subtle curve on the bottom. Ninja Scroll, Blade. So there's no shortage of inspiration. And I kind of like this. It's kind of a brush style. Yeah. Neat. Yeah, po old poster designs. It just depends on the mood you're going for, right? Because ever since mass printing has been a thing, which is really from like the 1880s until now, people have been dealing with these problems. How to organize text with images within a contained picture plane. And we see when it's done in a lazy way. <laughs> we can tell, right? Versus when it's really thought through. And we're not going to become great type designers <laughs> overnight. There's someone using something other than papyrus for avatar. So find inspiration where you can. And that's going to help you with your text blocking. So how do we text block? We make a new layer. I gave myself plenty of space, 18 by 24 inches. And now I'm just going to paint, I'm going to do it with pretty bright red, where I think this text should go. So the text is, oh, let's make that a little bit bigger. The text is Gorg dash on and then girl, right? And I don't know exactly how each letter will be designed, but I want to design possibilities for where they can go. So my obvious default is always just kind of a curved banner above and below. 
I think as like a t-shirt designer, a sticker designer, makes for a poster. You know, we could have G-O-R-G dash O-N and then G-I-R-L. So Gorgon Girl. Probably want to get a little bit more space to the O to emphasize that. That's one example. Just like thumbnails that we did for our logo, you might do at least three. So another example. Let's see. Maybe something more tattoo designed, like a banner overhead. You know, gore dash on. And then maybe a banner that flows across the tail. Actually, I could probably fit all of it just on the banner there. So that's an idea. So now I have two different ideas. Let's see if I can come up with one more. And sometimes it helps to look at inspiration. Yeah, I could do the sides. Be kind of an 80s feel. So what's tricky is a lot of people, when they do the sides, they think of this, right? Using the text like that. But that actually really hurts readability. So most type designers would say, always design it so that the text is flowing into itself. Like that. And then like this. Okay. Yeah, so you can kind of make blocks. You can see why it's helpful to do it with blocking. I can play with verticals and then off vertical, right? And there's something I kind of like about that. It's kind of a little like Japanese pop. I just worry about the readability of Gorgon in that form. Right. But I like, maybe I want the girl like that. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then I'll duplicate it. And then I could combine. I could use certain ones that I like on the top. And you'll see all of them give a slightly different character. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, where it's like the where wings. It, yeah. Yeah, kind of like that, but like uh, where it meets right there. Okay. Yeah, I'll show that. So having it like go from here to here. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, that's more of what I was trying to gotcha. get the vibe. Thank of. you. Yeah. I was like, you're not getting the vibe. <laughs> no, it's all right. <laughs> Sketching it for yourself is, is going to be how you kind of decide which, which approach works for you. Thank you. So we'll do one more, and then I'll kind of choose, and then heighten the one effect that I think works best. Right. right now, this is in the top running. There's something to this I like. Let's do one more. So it's a balance of your image and the type, right? I would say it's more like 30% on text, 70% on image generally, but it depends on the image. And that's because just letter forms in general are very, very strong focal points because it's language we decode, right? So even when the letter form is smaller, when it's readable, that's going to pull a lot of attention. So you want people ideally in most cases to see the image first and then read the letters second in the design hierarchy as commentary on the image. Does that make sense?
It's like when you look at a, a New Yorker cartoon. You look at the image and then you see the caption underneath. If you see the caption first and then you look at the image, it's just not as enjoyable. So to me, the text, and I'm an illustrator, I'm obviously biased, but to me, the text is just supportive of the image. So it should be secondary in the design hierarchy. So a hierarchy in design is what do you want your viewer to see first? What do you want them to see second, third, fourth, fifth? And you can control that with how you place things in the layout, the size you make them, the color you make them, the contrast you give them. So this is another option, kind of a symmetrical layout. Works really well for branding. If you think of like Harley Davidson, something like that. My problem here with that is this is not the same number of letters as this side, right? But it's good to try out all these different options. So this is the one I was kind of happiest with, but now I'm going to modify it. I'm going to use free transform, option command T, and play with the proportions a little of this. So have this kind of float above, but be a little bit asymmetrical. And then I'm going to play with this. Ah, keep hitting Command T instead of Option Command T for free transform. So I'm used to Photoshop. All right. And I'm just going to play with the tilt a little bit. And if I wanted to, I could get super clever. You see how this tail already kind of looks like a G? And if I can have an I and an R and L, but that's a little, a little too clever for me. But there's just all kinds of things you can do. So I'm going to take this as my default approach, my text blocking sketch. Remember, this is all going to get tweaked and modified as we go. So I'm going to save that. Just I'm going to save it just as a flattened JPEG. So I'm going to go to Layer, Flatten Image. And remember, I need to save it with a new name. I don't want to overwrite my PSD file for Assignment 5. I'm going to save it as a PSD, and this is going to be Assignment 5, or I'm sorry, Assignment 6, Poster Design. So this is our text blocking sketch. It's kind of the first thing we do. Make sure it's saved. Make sure you know where it's saved. Here it is. Now we go to the next step in the project. And that's deciding if we're going to just make the type ourselves, or if we're going to modify from an existing typeface like Stranger Things did. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to at least explore different typefaces. So the link is here under these text blocking sketches for defont.com. And I know I'm insp inspired kind of by these kind of anime series, especially the ones that are more kind of loose and free with their design, rather than the ones that are really locked in and very horizontal. So though this is a different kind of personality than I want, it has a little bit of the edge I'm thinking of. So what is this? This is what's called a brush, uh, a brush gothic type design. So I can look up gothic, and I can look up modern gothic. And gothic is going to have serifs, like decorations on the edges, but they're going to be modern. So they're going to be kind of squeezed into the image. And I want mine to be a little bit more, more um, readable. So this one has some potential, the one slice. And so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to type the text I want, at least for that, that top part. And I'm going to type it into my preview and then say submit. But then I can actually see in all caps, which is usually a good idea, 
how these typefaces look just in default spacing. 